John Evans' impressive broadcasting career spans over three decades. A local celebrity and Wilmington icon, John currently anchors for WECT and Fox Wilmington News. Well, when I was in college, I had already had a couple of years of doing radio. I mean, my first job when I was 15, uh, and I worked through high school uh, doing sports play-by-play -play and, and some DJ work. So when I got to college, I already had a little bit of a taste for it. The, the, the college that I went to had an internship program, and it was pretty extensive to where you literally worked 40 hours at the place you wanted to go to. What it did in college was it gave me the hunger to really want to do this for, for a living. And when my internship was done in my senior year, I kept going back to the TV station for nothing. I kept going there for free. And in February of my senior year, a job did open up. It was a part-time sports producer's job, you know, lower than the totem pole, not even the lowest on the totem pole, lower than the totem pole. But what it did was it got me in. It, it, it got me into the point where I was part of the process. And then from there, it just evolved into something that I've done since 1983. And I've been here now uh, 14, a little more than 14 years. But it was a big reason is we really didn't want to uproot the family, really didn't. And, and let's, let's face it, there's a lot of worse places to live than Wilmington, North Carolina. It's, it's a beautiful area. Uh, we get our share of national news Camp Lejeune, one way, Fort Bragg, another way. Um, hurricanes, we had a rush between 96 and 98 of five hurricanes. So we had national news here. We have, you know, big time politics two hours away in Raleigh. And so, yeah, we're the I'm, the, I'm the exception rather than the rule, but I look at it as I've been, I've been blessed to be here in an area, and a lot of people aren't in this business for a long time. A lot of people get soured on it. Um, they want to move on to bigger and better things and it's not always greener on the other side. And so I, I'm blessed to have been here. I really feel that way. Become like a mainstay in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone knows you know, yeah. who you are. I mean, you're hopeful about <laughs> it too, you know, so. yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of ways to stay in that. I've been here for a long time. I'm either older or a mainstay. Um, but yeah, and, and, and that's kind of fun. John has had many people assist him along the way and has several inspirations. Interim news director was at the television station, but his name was Paul Stuber. And Paul was one that really challenged us early on to be better and to match the words with the picture. And I was really blessed to work with some really creative people in, in my, when I first got started in this business. I did get a chance to meet David Brinkley. Um, when I was uh, uh, doing news at the time and, and asked him some questions about how he did it. So there's been a lot of people along the way um, who each have special moments in my career who I treasure and value because they've helped guide me along this 30 years, 31 years now that I've been doing it. While John has covered countless stories throughout his career, there are several that hold a special place in his memory. But. You know, I don't know if I, you know, in all honesty, Brendan, I, I don't know if there, if, if one of them will, if, if I can pick one. I mean, I, and I've asked the same question you have. And, and now I know how tough it is to get the answer. Because, I mean, there was the, the first, there was the first story I did on my favorite announcer of the Philadelphia Phillies when I was doing sports back in Pennsylvania. Obviously, when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, Fran did a story on her. Um, that was that was uh, that you know that was that was tough because I was part of the story. I wasn't reporting on it, and um, and, and so um, and Sheila hadn't had the the surgeries or anything like that yet. So we were still on the on the first stages of it. Um, all of these are coming flooding back now that um, the, 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 the story that I did when I went back and talked to my old high school basketball coach, that was cooler than cool at the time because I was able to walk in with the camera crew and now 
I had made something of myself and going back to my old high school. He has always had a passion for broadcasting and finds that every day presents unique news opportunities. It, it, it's special to me because, and, and we mentioned it earlier, is that you can come into the same newsroom every day. You can sit down at the same chair, at the same desk, with the same keyboard, the same screen in front of you, get, get material from the same sources, but no two days are exactly the same. Some days where it starts coming in and you got two or three stories and you're getting stuff coming in here and there, and you've got to tweet about it, you got to put it on Facebook and you're getting stuff coming in, and you're getting live reports, and, and it just feeds the hunger to want to tell these stories. And that's what I think I've had this whole time, is just to tell people stories about what's going on and tell it in the most creative, uh, fair, objective manner and to get people involved and to get them to care about what's going on in their community. Through the years, John has found that he's able to contribute to his local community in a unique way. Uh, you know, at, at, in the holidays now, um, organizing a, a food drive or a fun drive and using the television station as a way of telling the story of this group that is homeless or doesn't have food, needs your help, and then you get people in the community to donate. The way that society obtains their news and information is constantly changing and the news industry is changing with them. Well, it's where news comes first is our motto. Uh, and now that can be on the air uh, with going live somewhere. It could be on social media. It can be on our website. Uh, it can be on a blog somewhere. We deal with the issues that are first and foremost on people's minds. There's always going to be television news on a local level. So if it's information that you need to know that is of life and limb and protecting lives, then we go on the air to tell you that news. The network anchors, they will deal with stories on a, a, a nationwide basis. They'll deal with a hurricane that hits southeastern North Carolina, but they come in here and then they're gone. That's not their story after the one day or maybe two days that they cover it. Whereas that's our story long before, during, and long after. One of the biggest things that I, that I value about the people who invite me into their homes every night is that I have to earn that invitation every night into their homes. They can easily go somewhere else. But in the end, people want to know the facts about how something is going to impact them. And that's what we do. We've earned that invitation. I try to earn it every night into, into people's homes. And as long as they'll keep having me, and as long as they don't change the door code on the television station, um, I'll continue to do it because I love it. I still love it 30 years, 30 years after I started. It's still the best job in the world. Social media has brought local news to a much wider audience. Well, it's changed a lot. Um, uh, you know, obviously there's the, there's the writing, there's the uh, uh, reporting when they ask me to, uh, anchoring, for me it's four shows, four newscasts a day. Uh, but now I also post on Facebook, I post on Twitter, uh, I post on Instagram. Social media on top of it all has added uh, a lot more as far as the responsibilities we have on a daily basis. But Twitter, Facebook, and all social media have made uh, TV news more immediate now than it ever was before. And there's more people out gathering those stories and posting them on social media. And that's where people have to be careful, is that you have to make sure that you're getting your facts and figures from credible sources. We have more people watching it's just through television now, it's a smaller audience, but our audience is bigger on the web, on the mobile device. We're, we're being watched all around the world at any time by people who can see us online and on the web. So our reach is broader, but our television audience may have shrunk because of the people who are using us in different venues. So we still have value, and we still are part of this community but people are just getting us in different ways. But nowadays with social media, people tell you how they think you did in a heartbeat. And so you gotta have a thick skin if you're gonna get in the, in the, under the microscope. So from part-time in a small little town in Pennsylvania to do some of the things that I've done over the past 35 years, I never would have been able to, to, to write a script this good, but I'm not done yet. And so there are a lot of others who are coming up and I want them to want it just as much as I did and still do to this day.